In this lecture, we're going to try out the classical multidimensional scaling that we introduced in the last one. It's going to be entirely code. Um, we're going to be using a Jupyter notebook and trying a, a fairly contrived or simple example where we know um, the observation matrix to begin with, which is not really uh, usually the case, but it's going to help us uh, to sort of cheat and to get a, a, a sort of a glimpse about how well, uh, a glimpse at how well things are performing without doing a kind of a real uh, blind or, or, or less cheaty kind of way uh, uh, to see uh, how, how successful your transformation from the distance matrix to the observation matrix was. In the next lecture, we'll, we'll introduce real ways of doing those assessments and seeing how well you did when you don't actually know what the observation matrix was. Uh, but we'll leave that for next time. All right, let's get started. Today's lecture is a little bit different in structure. It's going to be entirely based on uh, a Jupyter Notebook, uh, so all code today. And I'll, so I'll be walking through code that I've written up and that I've marked up with text, which you've seen me do before. Um, but this is the, the entirety of today's lecture. The idea behind this is that you should kind of be listening to me and looking at the code windows as I describe them. But I've left, you know, typed up comments that are not really so much cues for myself, but rather, although they do kind of work that way, um, but rather for you to be kind of reading later uh, as a reference when you look at the at the code, not so much reading them while I speak and say kind of different words. Um, so yeah, so that's just kind of how you should listen to this lecture. Uh, all right, so we're gonna do more uh, with uh, principal coordinates today, or rather multidimensional scaling, classical multidimensional scaling. So we're just going to start doing some, some demonstrations of it in code to see kind of how it works. And part of what we're doing is not really so realistic. Um, and that is that today that, that our example, oops, sorry, our example is going to be one where we started with a data matrix and produced a distance matrix, which as I've been saying over and over again, is not really kind of what multidimensional scaling is usually applied to. It's usually done to something where you have the distance matrix to begin with and you don't know anything about uh, the data matrix. Uh, it might not even make so much sense to think of one or that's kind of the point is to try it out. But yeah, so, so we're going to start off with a really simple uh, matrix. So it's going to be a seven by three matrix. So seven rows and three columns. And we'll just generate it here with this line. And so these you should think of as being seven different points in three dimensional space. So like the vertical column is the X axis coordinate, the Y axis coordinate is the second column and the Z axis coordinate is the third column. So like, yeah, so there's one point here, here's another one and so on. There's seven of these. And so we're gonna start off by just making a Euclidean distance matrix out of these guys. And I think we might've used this routine in the first practical at the end of it, I think. I can't remember. Um, but in any case, that's what we're going to do. Uh, before we do it, though, and we'll do it with this command that's sitting here at the bottom of the screen, dist, um, we want to try to make sure we understand the output of the distance matrix. So we'll try to make a prediction. So let's try to make a prediction for the distance between points 1 and 5. So that means row 1, which is at x equals 1, y equals 4, z equals 8. And then two, three, four, five. So it's this point here. Three, one, three is the second point. Um, and so the you could just calculate this Euclidean distance um, with this expression here. And so let's do that, and we'll get a number for it. And if we're if we correctly produce the Euclidean distance matrix, we should find this number um, in row one, column five of that matrix. So let's do that here, and we'll just print the matrix. And so a couple of things. So first of all, row one, uh, column five is empty, right? So what does that mean? Uh, if you think about this, the Euclidean distance matrix is symmetric, right? So um, when you get this thing back, uh, you get nothing on one side of the matrix. So this distance uh, matrix object is not simply a matrix. It's a little more complicated than that. And we'll look at its attributes shortly. But so you don't see the diagonal either, uh, which would be all zeros. Um, 
but uh, you, in this case, we have the other quadrant, or I don't know what you call it, the other off diagonal of the matrix, the lower off diagonal. And so we should be looking at, instead of row one, column five, we should be looking at row five, column one. And that's this guy here, and that matches. So um, at least it sort of makes sense what's going on here. And yeah, okay, so let's let's try out multidimensional scaling on this distance matrix. And so that was last lecture where we introduced it. So I'm just going to kind of remind you of what we're doing. So we've got this distance matrix, and then we're going to try some algorithm that is multidimensional scaling that tries to generate points, uh, data, a data matrix from this, uh, like the kind that we used to at the start here. But it doesn't know anything about that matrix. It only works with the distance matrix. Um, so let's, let's just have a look at the little help file here and see kind of a little bit about what it says. Um, you'll see some, some commands here like eig and add and so on. And we'll play a little bit with these. We'll play with the eigen or the eig one later. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to remind you that you should, you should look at these help files kind of when you're trying out routines for the first time. I'm not going to walk through the whole thing with you here, but this is the kind of thing you should do. Um, so I will, I will just close that here and we'll, we'll just give it a try. So we're going to try to um, make a, an X matrix from this, but it isn't normally the case that you know anything about the X matrix. And so you wouldn't know, for example, that the kind of target that, that, that this distance matrix was made from points in three dimensional space. There's no way to usually know that. And so you, that's kind of you, usually kind of what you're trying to do is figure out what dimensionality makes the most sense. And so let's see what happens if we try to make um, um, X matrix in five dimensional space. So we try to suppose that these are distances between points that had five variants or features that describe them. And so sure enough, here's a, a matrix of seven different points, um, all in five dimensions. And so you can look at these and try to understand um, what they mean. Um, and there's definitely some things that kind of jump out here. And some of the things that will happen in this example are a little unrealistic because we made this distance. This is the Euclidean distance matrix, which is the kind of distance that classical multidimensional scaling is kind of looking for or anticipating. And we made it from a, a, an actual you know, set of points. And you can kind of see some of that reflected here. If you look at these last two columns of the, this is, so this is the X matrix that we produced from this. The last two columns are really small. Uh, so around 10 to the minus eight or smaller. Whereas the first three columns are all kind of of order unity or of order one, they're they're not they're not tiny. Um, so there's clearly something different uh, between columns four and five and columns one through three, and that might be you know when you're just exploring things, the kind of thing that would tip off like oh maybe you should be looking at three dimensional space. But is again this is this example is a little bit contrived so. Um, so now we'll go ahead and see what, what happens if you actually had used three dimensional space um, as your, so this that's what this K parameter is. I should have said that, I'm sorry. Uh, when we looked at the help file, I should have at least drawn attention to that. Uh, this is the target number of dimensions. So the number of features and we went with five. So let's say we went with three, which actually was where the right dimensionality for the X matrix. And so here, here you get seven different points in three-dimensional space. And the first thing I want you to notice, uh, the screen's a little uh, big for this, but or the font's a little big for this. These three columns here, the first three columns of the seven-dimensional points, are in fact the first three columns of the three-dimensional points. So when you when you went when you go down in dimensionality like that, what you're really doing is just ignoring the higher dimension. So if I went, if I did k equals four, um, I would recover this column here, the, the one that my mouse is pointing to. So column, column four here. And so that's what happens when you, when you reduce down uh, the dimensionality like that. The other thing I want you to notice here um, 
is that the, these aren't the points that we started with. Um, I don't remember what those were exactly, and we could go back and look, but you can tell right away they're not because they're not integers. Um, you know, 2.48 was definitely not one of the coordinates that I had listed. And so remember, there's no way to know, uh, there's, there's no unique set of points um, in space, in, in sort of data space or X space that correspond to these distances. There's lots of different coordinate axes you could have used. Um, and so, yeah, so let's just double check what the X matrix originally looked like. And sure, it's not the same. So one, four, and eight, that's none of these. None of these points are one, four, and eight. You know, they're, they're, to they're all totally different. So clearly this is, if it's the same data, it's, you know, in some different frame of reference, uh, different coordinate system. So not the ones that I was calling like X, Y, and Z when we started out. Um, but it should be the case if you've done this right, and we have done it right because it was a contrived example. Uh, often there isn't a clear meaning of what that means, right? Uh, but if, if you've done it right, then it should be the case that when you take your spatial points and then generate distances from them, that you get back the distances that you started with. And so in other words, the distances that go along with these points should be the same as the distances that go along with these points. So if I make a distance matrix from these seven points, I should get back the same information. And so let's go ahead and do that. So this is generating the distance distances from the multidimensional scaling output. And here's the result. And I'll just remind you of what our distance matrix looked like originally. And it's the same. And in a way, this is kind of why the numbers were small for the fourth and fifth columns when we did the five dimensional case. It's because the algorithm is doing, is trying to make this happen. And if you enter, if you move your points far off into those fourth and fifth dimensions, you will introduce distance that wasn't there originally. And so, um, yeah, anyways, so we'll, we'll get into more about assessing whether or not you've done things sort of right, uh, kind of uh, later on. But so just want to remind you kind of what's going on here. So there isn't any unique uh, X matrix that goes along with a distance matrix, right? So you have an N by N distance matrix, and you don't know, did those come from uh, seven dimensions? So, so N different points in seven dimensional space? or n different points in two-dimensional space. You, there's no way to know that. And even if you did know that, even if you did restrict yourself to one number of dimensions there, like we like the three-dimensional case, you don't know, th there's no unique set of points in three-dimensional space that all have these distances. Lots of different points would have, are separated by, you know, these distances. And so I'll just, I've just put a blurb here to kind of remind you of what multi, classical multidimensional scaling is trying to do. So first of all, um, it lets you put in a free parameter for the, the number of dimensions. I've, it's, I've called it P here, but it's what they call K in the, in the algorithm, in the routine. It, it then supposes that the distances you've given it are Euclidean and that they came from P dimensions. And then it chooses, it chooses X in such a way that it will reproduce that D. Um, I didn't put that in there as a bullet point, but that's a key point. <laughs> um, but that it will also have it. So it resolves this issue of how do you orient the coordinate system uh, for the data matrix in such a way that the mean vector, so the columns, the mean vector of the matrix X uh, are all zero. So, so they're centered, the, the matrix X is centered. And it chooses the coordinate axes in such a way that they um, that that they point along the eigenvectors of a covariance matrix. In other words, so that the covariance matrix is diagonal, um, and that these are the outputs of some principal component analysis. So that's the idea of what uh, principal coordinate analysis does. That's why it's called that, um, or multi or classical multidimensional scaling. That's its other name. Uh, so let's double check that it really did that. So we'll do principal component analysis PR using PR comp on the original data, and we'll spit out its transformed points. And so these are the points. So I've given it the original data matrix here, X, and so it's a funny naming here. 
This is what we call Y in our lectures. So it's the transformed data onto the principal component axes. And these, this is what those things look like. So there's seven different um, points here and in three-dimensional space. This is, this is principal uh, PCA, so there's no messing around with uh, uh, the dimensionality here exactly. And these are the same points that we got as output from multidimensional scaling. So I'll just remind you of that. And so here they are. So except, however, yeah, so, so take a look at this. So these are the same, sort of. Right, so 2.480, that looks right, but there's a sign off here. There's a sign difference. This is, that one was minus and this one's positive. And then if you look at this column, like that's, this is happening all over. The, this whole first column, everything is off in sign. Um, the second column, everything is off in sign. And the third column, actually, everything is off in sign. It didn't have to work out that way, but it did. And this is the usual kind of ambiguity the multidimensional scaling has chosen its coordinate system in such a way that it goes that the axes go along the eigenvectors of the co covariance matrix but there's a directionality freedom there a sign freedom when you look at those eigenvectors you could point completely the opposite direction and everything still is the same so that's what this is this usual kind of uh, sign freedom when it comes to choosing the eigenvectors of a matrix all right, and so let's just verify that this is all due to the, the differences we see up there are only to do with signs. So we'll take the absolute value of everything in here and we'll subtract it from the absolute value of everything in the principal component analysis. So we'll ignore the signs. And the biggest difference you see is 10 to the minus 15. And since all the numbers originally were around one, uh, that's a fractionally a really you know a negligible difference. And so it looks like they're doing this. It is indeed what we said. All right, now let's try it out with a non-Euclidean distance matrix. So this is a similar approach, um, but now this time the contrived example is a little less contrived because the distance matrix, so I'm still using the, um, the seven three-dimensional points that we started the lecture with, but I'm going to generate a distance matrix that's not Euclidean. Uh, it's using the Manhattan distances. And so those are different. Um, and so we'll make that matrix here. Uh, yeah, and I'm not printing it, but you could. I guess we should. Should we look at it? Or why not? So these are them here. Uh, they're all integers because the Manhattan distances, remember, it's adding up these components like kind of like a taxi cab going along the different dimensions. And um, so you started with integers, and so all these things gives you integers. Um, and I just want to remind you that this output, so again, it's just only showing you this off diagonal. It doesn't show you the zeros in the diagonal. It doesn't even show the diagonal. Um, and this thing, it's, you know, it's not just a matrix, but you could make, you could generate it, one, a simple matrix from it. But so let's just look at the attributes. I probably should have done this before. Um, but so it tells you something about the size, which is the dimensionality here. Uh, n, that is, the dimensionality for the distance matrix, so there's seven, meaning we use seven different points to start with. Um, and then that, there's all this other information, but here it says, I think this is interesting to know that this distance matrix, it's not just a collection of numbers, it has associated with it an attribute that tells you what kind of distance it had, or what kind of distance metric was used to make it. Um, so this input that you're giving to the classical multidimensional scaling um, that we're giving it at least, it has some extra information in there that if classical multi-dimensional scaling wanted, to, the algorithm wanted to cheat, it could see what we were using um, if, if we did indeed generate the distance matrix in the way that we did. All right, um, and so using this uh, Manhattan distances, let's try again to generate a five-dimensional uh, collection of five-dimensional points and so it's a little different than the last time. So we still have, um, okay, so it's still obviously five dimensional points. But if you look at these, the fifth dimension in all of these, the points are all going off only a tiny amount. And in fact, they all go off by the same amount, which is kind of a red flag, um, or at least it gets your attention um, that something interesting is going on. And the fourth dimension though, it, there's nothing, I think, when you look at this, to tell you that something is 
like that somehow the fourth dimension is not uh, genuine in the sense that the points didn't come from a four dimensional space. So I don't think there's anything to kind of clue you into that this time. I mean, maybe they're a little smaller. They're probably smaller on average. Um, but I don't know if that really tells you anything. And so, so that isn't always, you know, you can't look at this distance matrix and tell right away somehow by looking for small values, uh, what, what dimensionality your points came from. Cause again, they often didn't really come from anywhere. Um, okay. So now we'll restrict this again to three dimensions and that should just clip off these last two columns. Um, so we'll do that. And I believe that that's what it did. Yeah. So this again, it's a little font, a little bit big for the screen here. Um, I'm, I'm looking at my screen for what you guys are going to see. I hope it looks okay for you. Um, I think it's certainly big enough. Maybe it's too big, but anyways. Um, okay. So, so this is what it looks like when we restrict the Manhattan distance matrix, to, uh, out, oh, sorry, <laughs> the classical multidimensional scaling output from the Manhattan distance matrix to a three dimensional space. And so you get these numbers here and these again, clearly are not the three dimensional points that we started with, right? So let's go back and look at them. The distances for the Manhattan distances, these are just different, right? So, oh, sorry, let's see. I'm getting ahead of my, so these are the, these are the spatial points, right? So these are definitely not those spatial points. Um, I didn't, I didn't generate the distance matrix from it, but if I did, um, it wouldn't be correct. Shall we try it? Should we try it? Oh, I don't know. Live, live calculations. Let's give it a try. So, uh, let's get grab the routine from where I did that before. Where did we do it here? So I'm going to try this and see what we get. It should be sort of interesting. Um, it should be close, uh, but it won't be close to the Manhattan distances because again, um, classical multidimensional scaling is not doing that. Um, uh, where was I here? Here's where we were. Yeah. Um, I restricted to three dimensions. Yeah. Uh, we can, uh, so I'll, I'll do that. What I was just describing in a second, but we can verify that it's not the same thing as principal component analysis by that same routine, by looking at the dis distances, sorry, by subtracting off the points here. So you can see that they're, they're very different than the principal comp component analysis. And then again, that's because uh, multidimensional scaling is trying to do everything with Euclidean distances, but this distance matrix was not uh, Euclidean to begin with. Okay, so let's insert this little command here. Uh, so this is generating the distances. Yeah, so this is, so this is uh, Manhattan distances. So this is taking the Manhattan distance matrix, feeding it into classical multidimensional scaling, bringing back points in three dimensions, and then using those points to generate the distance matrix. And I want to compare that to the Manhattan distance matrix that we started with. And it's interesting. So it's not, it's not right, you know, but it's, you can see it's like sort of, it's sort of aiming at integers in a way. I don't know. So let's take a look. I've forgotten what the distance matrix originally looked like. So we'll kind of insert that. Yeah. So that top element was 13 and we got 13.008. Um, and so you see what it's trying, it's trying to make this work, but it didn't, it can't get it exactly because in this instance, the distance matrix was not Euclidean. Um, and so when you use multidimensional scaling and make these X, this X matrix, and then use the Euclidean distance method, uh, the measure to generate distances, they're not going to match, uh, because these distances weren't, uh, Euclidean distances to begin with. And so it's off, uh, which was not the case when everything was Euclidean. That's why I think that's kind of interesting. Okay. Now there's more information coming out of the multidimensional scaling routine than just the uh, spatial points. And so let's take a look at sort of a fuller picture of everything that comes out of it. I'm going to return to the case of the Euclidean distance matrix. So that's the one that was made from our um, seven 
uh, points in the, all the same X matrix that we start with here. So the seven different points in three dimensional space. And D is the Euclidean distance matrix that you get from that. Um, so we're going to do multidimensional scaling where we go for a three dimensional output. And I'm going to put in this flag I equals true. And we'll see what kind of comes out here. So we get a bunch of more information than we had before. So we've got something called points. And this is the, the spatial points. Um, we've got something called eig. And so these are eigenvalues of something. Um, and we'll think about what those are in a second. Um, and then there's this other information. Something x is null, something called ac, which is zero, and something called GOF, which is an acronym for goodness of fit. And we'll talk about that in the next lecture. And it's one here. And in fact, it's one because uh, the distance matrix was Euclidean. And so it's going to be able to succeed perfectly. So in other words, it's got somehow it's able to check how well it did. Um, it's doing some kind of comparison of the distance matrix that it was given and a distance matrix that's associated with these guys. And so we'll talk about that in the next lecture. But what I want to get at is what, what are these eigenvalues? Um, so here's they are, here they are. So how many are there even? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. And three of them are biggish. The next three are basically zero. Well, actually, the next four are basically zero, but they're also uh, not all positive. So this is a little bit interesting. So what could these be the variances of you know, there's this close link between principal component analysis and classical multidimensional scaling. So could these be the variances along the principal component axes? If you think about that, is that possibly what these things could be? So I'm going to pause for a minute while you kind of think about it. So you should look at those and think, are those the variances? And so you should conclude that they're not um, for two reasons. One is there's too many of them. Right. There's there's a, what did I say? Seven, there's seven of them. I can't count them. But yeah, there's seven of them. <laughs> so there's too many. The principal component analysis um, doesn't have seven dimensions. So so there's no what are these like seven? There's no way there are variances along the three different principal components um, associated with this data. Um, also, some of these are negative. And so what does that mean? Like, it, it can't be variances if they're negative, even if they're tiny, it doesn't make any sense, they couldn't, there's no way to make a negative variance, uh, even if it's tiny. So so something's weird about that. So these are definitely not those things. But let's just double check. So we'll, we'll look at the, the principal component analysis of x again, and we'll spit out its. Uh, so PR comp, it gives you access to the standard deviations. Um, and so I'll square those. Right, and so these are 16, 7, and 2, roughly. And these are not these guys. Uh, there's nothing. These, so you might have thought, like, okay, well, these three are those. And then the rest of these weirdos are kind of not variants. But that isn't the case, right? 16, 7, and 2 don't look like these. Um, so what is going on? And I just want to remind you that in principal component analysis, these things are the eigenvalues of the covariance matrix. And so we can check that. Um, 16, 7, and 0. Those are the same. Um, unless you did some kind of scaling, uh, right? So in which case they might be the eigenvalues of the correlation matrix. Um, but anyways, that's a technicality. So, so these are, that's what these eigenvalues are. So there's certainly not any of these, these are not present in this collection of eigenvalues here, right? And so what are they? So think for a second what they might actually be. Okay, so what they are, are the eigenvalues of this matrix of dot products that we talked about during the kind of under the hood mathy section of the last lecture. Um, and so those are all the different possible dot products of the matrix or of, of the spatial points of x, right? And so um, I think I think if I remember right, so b, yeah, you can see it down there. So I'm going to put it here and put it in here. So b is equal to what was it equal to it's just below so it's x times x transpose so we'll do that 
right? So that's that's how x was, or that's how b was defined. So it's the collection of dot products of all the spatial points. Um, and so that's what these eigenvalues, or at least this is what they appear to be. And so let's check it. Uh, so I say they appear because I've run this block already. But so we'll take the points from, uh, so this is getting the points part of the CMD scale, of the multidimensional scaling in three dimensions. And we'll dump that into something I call XPCA. But it really came from the multidimensional scaling. And then I'll make this B matrix, which is X PCA times its transpose. Uh, and then we'll just look at its eigenvalues. And remember, so X is going to be seven by seven. Um, so it could have up to seven. So that's also a red flag that we might be onto something. Um, and I think these are right. So at least let's look at the first three. So 100.5, 42.6, and 14.8. Where are they? They're way back here. Yeah, so they look right. Um, what doesn't look right, though, is these little ones. Um, uh, so they're off a little bit. So what do we have? 6.8, 4.9, minus 1.2. And these aren't the same, right? So something is wrong there. But maybe it's some kind of uh, round-off error or something, because these are such tiny things uh, compared to the other eigenvalues. So... Uh, it's hard to say when you have eigenvalues that are very, this is basically what this routine is telling you is these eigenvalues are zero. And so if you conclude that for both of them, then they kind of agree. So maybe they just hit zero kind of wrong or differently rather. Okay. And so uh, we're going to finish up by talking a little bit more about these eigenvalues. Now, remember, um, when you start off with uh, your distance matrix, you don't know anything about the number of dimensions that the points came from. So you, in principle, could put them in any dimensionality, but multidimensional scaling's algorithm won't allow you to do any number of dimensions. Um, and so I'll show you here the output here. So the number of dimensions has to be, at most, uh, one fewer than the number of points that went into your distance matrix. So in other words, if the distance matrix was n by n, uh, so it's a collection of distances between n different points, then classical multidimensional scaling will not allow you to try to put those back into a space of dim dimensionality n or higher. Uh, it's just it's just not, the algorithm won't do that. Um, it doesn't mean you couldn't try, um, but it won't. Um, so the algorithm for it doesn't work. And furthermore, um, so, so you can't go that high. But furthermore, if you let's say you put it in six dimensions, that's allowed, right? That's that's smaller. Six is the biggest number here for n equals seven. Um, so you could do that. But so let's see what happens when you actually do it. Um, so it gives you a warning here that's saying, look, you've asked for uh, six dimensions here, but only the first five only five of the first six eigenvalues, and it's talking about those eigs again, are positive. And so that is, again, that's these things. So what does it say, the first five? Uh, well, again, this is this is my own calculation using the B directly. So maybe I should go down here and spit them out, right? So let's say eig equals true. And so it's only the first six eigenvalues. So one, two, three, four, five. Or sorry, it says only the first five. One, two, three, four, five. And then here we got, okay, tiny but negative. So it's objecting to these somehow. And so that's a further restriction. Um, so it's only going to allow you to project back down to a five-dimensional space. But it will do that, and then it'll, it'll, it'll change it up for you. So we tried to go to six, and it's like, oh, uh, no, for some reason the algorithm... Uh, is restricted by the number of positive eigenvalues for this B matrix or for whatever it seems to be like this B matrix. Um, and it will restrict itself accordingly. And that this number, remember, the number of positive eigenvalues, it actually, well, I don't know if it would remember, it actually doesn't have anything to do with the dimensionality of X. Um, and so let's, which, which um, you might not have guessed because I said, they're, they might be the eigenvalues of this B matrix, and B is made from X, so maybe uh, the dimensionality would play a role there. The dimensionality of B would always be the same, but uh, 
maybe its eigenvalues could be different. But uh, so here are the eigenvalues for the k equals five case, and uh, from from multidimensional scaling. And here are the eigenvalues from the k equals two case, and they're exactly the same. So somehow these eigenvalues don't have anything to do, uh, or if they do, they're some universal dependence on this matrix X. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to say is that uh, we could have also, let's, let's try the same thing, uh, look at the eigenvalues from the non-Euclidean distance matrix case and see what you get. So they won't be the same. Um, so this is showing the kind of the full information and then give me the eigenvalues specifically for the going from the Manhattan distance matrix to three-dimensional space. And so here they are. And so a couple of interesting things to note. So first of all, they're not the same. Um, so it definitely, well, I mean, the input matrix was different here, right? It's the Manhattan distance rather than the Euclidean distance. So that kind of is not really a big surprise that the input matrix itself was different. Um, and they, but they do have the same number of positive uh, eigenvalues and, but not the same number of non-zero ones. If by non-zero, you just mean bigger than tiny, say, because up here, uh, what we have three, right? Um, and then they start to get tiny. And here we've got four, right? Before they start to get well the next one is tiny the next two they're not tiny actually but they are negative and so that's a, like some other kind of oddity here um particularly if you're going to think of them in any way as being linked to variances that's definitely a concern so that's just a simple example of how you go about using classical multidimensional scaling in r using cmd scale um in the next lecture we'll we'll explain more about what's going on with those eigenvalues that we were exploring at the end there and we'll see a kind of a detailed explanation of of how the goodness of fit measures work which are super important when you don't actually know what your distance or sorry what your observation matrix was to begin with in the next lecture we'll also see a totally different way uh, of doing these transformations so it's not classical multidimensional scaling uh, it's, it's called non-metric scaling We'll see that next time. Until then, 